Hey guys, welcome back to this new Jetpack Compose video, which is about animations. So in this video, we'll have a look at some basic animations that we can do, like changing in sizing, in visibility, in content, and all those stuff. So let's get started. So here we are in Android Studio, in which I have this little screen, in which I have this state is visible, that just changes when I click on the button. Right now, we don't actually change anything. So after that, I have this common that has 300 dps as a size and this is its background and it doesn't have anything inside it. Now what we are going to do is try to just animate in a content size. So in a very simple way, let's create a box like this that let's say modifier dot size. Let's go for, I don't know, 100 or 200 dot dp and then let's give it some background because it doesn't have any background. Let's go for color dot black. Now here is our box as you can see and we want to show it or make it invisible when we click on the button. So if is visible, we show it like that. And then of course when we click on the button now, it keeps showing. Now we just want to animate it a little bit. Okay, now what we want to do is actually animating this visibility instead of just it appearing and disappearing like this. We want to make it animated. For that, we can use the animated visibility composable. So we can write animated visibility like this. Now, instead of just checking if it's visible or not, we can just take the state, completely delete the if statement, and then pass our boolean, which is this one. We can now put the box inside here, inside this composable, and simply with this one, we can animate the visibility. Let's restart the app. Okay, now let's click on it. As you can see, it's animating. So it's sliding from the top to the bottom, and then when it disappears, it also slides from the bottom to the top with a little bit of fade. Okay, we can actually change this. So right now we can see what this function takes. It takes a modifier, an enter, and an exit. Now we are interested in these two. So let's say enter. What we want to do is define how our composable is going to show when it enters or when it's appearing. So right now it's actually sliding from the top to the bottom. We want to, for example, make it slide from the left to the right or something like that. So we can write slide in horizontally like this. And then when we click, as you can see, it's sliding horizontally. Now, of course, when it disappears, it slides up. But when it's appearing, it slides horizontally. We can add something else like fade or fade in. Now it will be fading in, but also sliding. We also have exit like this. Now we can run, for example, slide out, let's say horizontally again, plus fade out if we want to. And then we see it's now actually coming from the side when it's appearing, but now when it's disappearing, it goes back. It's no longer going up. So these are some animations that we can use to animate visibility. We can just use fade in and fade out if we want to. If we don't want any slide, we can do this. And then let's see. As you can see, it's just fading in and out. So that's now for changing or animating visibility in Jetpack Compose using this animated visibility composable. As you can see, whatever inside here will be animated when it's changing its visibility. Okay, now let's just maybe comment this out, also this, and now let's try something else, which is animating the size. Now, the size of this box is 300 dps. If you want to change its size, let's create a new state for that right here. So let's call it size and by default, let's say it's, I don't know, 20.dp. And then when we click on it, we simply just change it. So let's say size is going to be 300.dp. Okay. And we then define size right here. Now when we click on it, it will become big. But we have no animation. How do we actually now make the size animated as well? For that, instead of just using the remember, we can write animate. And then we get a lot of things. We can animate anything. You can see we can animate a dp value an int value a float value so let's say now we have a color that we want to animate from red to black or something like so we can use this one now we want to animate the change or the size of our box we can use dp we can also use int let's use dp the target value that we want to animate to uh, now let's just bring this one to a new line so when it's visible so when this one is visible we want to make it 300 dps otherwise let's say 20 or a small value so if is visible let's go for 300.dp else let's go for 20.dp for example we need to make it a vol like this now we don't actually have to change this one and then just define that one as our state maybe we need to add some label the label can be something like size of something and now let's click on it 
as you can see it's animating so we have more things we can do here something like animation spec and this one just defines how our animation looks like for example we can go for a very simple one like the twin with this twin we get various things like the duration in millis so how long our animation is going to last delay in millis so if we click on the button for example we want to delay our animation for a second and then we want to animate and then the easing just means how the animation is going to look like okay so let's for example say a delay millis so we want to start after 500 milliseconds and then duration in millis so we want to uh, we want the animation to last for let's say five seconds so very long and then the easing can be anything for example easing last out linear in we can choose uh, anyone we want and then they just look slightly different if you want to but uh, we usually don't change this one now we are actually changing how our animation is going to look like so let's click on the button we wait for 500 milliseconds and then we start animating for five seconds and then when we click again we wait for 500 milliseconds and then we start animating for another five seconds okay now of course we have different animation specs we can even go low level by using keyframes like this but then that's very low level and if you want me to do videos about these low level animations i can go and make them but i'm just going to go simple right here so this is now how we can animate something when it's changing its size so as i said we can animate anything so let's just go back for the twin or let's just not go for any animation spec and then let's say animate we have different things like float integer as i said if offset anything let's go for color and let's try changing the color of our box so let's say when it's visible we are going to go for color dot uh, i don't know blue when it's not visible color dot magenta or something let's go for a different color like red probably it's going to be a better color and then the size let's go for 300 dps all the time now the color is my primary color but i'm going to change it to my uh, now it's called size but let's say color that's a better name and let's use that right here we can also use it right here and now we have the color red when i click we animate to the color blue like that we can definitely pass an animation spec again using twin let's go for a duration and let's say five seconds so our animation is going to last five seconds so it slowly fades to blue so that's for the color and with this as i said we can animate anything you can imagine just because we have an interval use so anything that takes an integer we can animate that the next thing we're going to say an infinite animation so let's say i want to keep animating this color and changing it forever for that i can use a transition so while transition is going to be remember infinite transition okay and then to make this one an infinite transition or an infinite uh, animation you can say i can now change this one by writing my transition dot animate color like this the initial value the initial color let's say color dot magenta the other color or the target color is going to be color dot let's say green the animation spec so since we want actually this one to be repeatable we can use an infinite repeatable like this where we now can pass a twin let's go for now as you can see it's animating very fast let's go for three seconds it will slow down and it will keep just animating between these two different colors we probably need to add a label and here let's just add a label as well now let's actually try animating something else like making our box a circle so let's just get rid of this and also this transition and then let's say size or whatever let's just name it size by animate for example int as state the target value again when it's visible so let's just say if is visible since we want a circle we can go for 300.dp else let's go for 220.dp and uh, actually we want a dp not an integer because here we have int so we can go for dp as state maybe we need to add that label and then let's clip now the corners of my shape here let's just go for a color like material theme dot color scheme dot primary color and then let's clip its corners like dot clip rounded corner shape and then let's go for this one let's name it corners for example and then pass that right here now let's run the app and just try it out as you can see it's animating and it's making my shape a circle and now we can try another animation spec let's go back for the size of our box let's name this one size again and then 
when we actually click on the button we just want to add extra size to it so let's call this one for example size it starts from 20.dp let's call this one animated size and then the target value is going to be my size right here all right so what i do right here is that i just add extra size it is going to be size plus 20.dp so i add 20 dps to it now i'm going to use it as my box size like that okay so every time i click on the button i add extra 20 dps to it now let's see what will happen as you can see it's small it keeps getting bigger but nothing is really special we want to make it a little bit fancy by using an animation spec and now we're not going just for a twin which is the normal one that we want to use or we use we can go for spring which can make our animation bouncy so let's say spring dot rotation let's say high bouncy like this and then let's try it out as you can see it's bouncy okay so it's just another way as i said we can definitely use a keyframe in which we say this is how we want our animation to be at this specific time so if you are into video editing you understand what these keyframes are but it's a little bit uh, advanced so i'm not going to actually cover it in this video uh, in another video in the future i will of course do some low level animations now i'm just showing you how to animate the size of something or animate its visibility or its color or its corner radius or anything like that using some cool animation specs like bouncing or linear easing and all those stuff